And then the third one is uh, uh, Ray, Ray Oldenburg. Now, he conceives of, he's got the space already staked out. He knows there's a space. There is a third space for him. And the way that we determine a third space is a space where, uh, that has the qualities of, of being sort of a, it's sort of a, like a, when we, when we join a club, if I'm in, for instance, um, let's say I was in the Polish Falcons, my club space, where my club meets is a third space. A coffee house is a third space. Um, sometimes bars are third spaces. Um, churches, not so clearly a third space, but a, you know, in generally speaking, but in Oldenburg, um, the third space the, a church could not be a third space because it doesn't have all these qualities. It's it's not a neutral ground where uh, you don't, a, in a third space, it's a neutral ground. You don't have to be there. You go there voluntarily. You go there um, just because it's a good place to be. It's a leveler. The social, whatever social differences we have, structures that keep us in a certain strata, um, in certain strata, are gone. We're all equal in that space. Um, conversation is what we do there. That's the main activity. We talk. We talk to each other. We converse. We don't make speeches. We don't lecture. We talk to each other. And through that interaction, you know, communities are built and things like that. Um, it's accessible. You can get there. It'll accommodate you. When you go there, um, it will change. The space will change to make you feel more welcome. Um, although there isn't like there aren't social strata, there are people who are insiders or regulars to this space that go there more often and are more attuned to the way the the dynamics of that third space, according according to Oldenburg, um, where they can they can initiate the newcomer more or less, and bring them along, and, you know, I can, I can lurk on the edge, to use the internet term, lurk on the edge of this Oldenburg's third space, and then feel if I want to engage in the third space more fully, um, and the activities, the conversations, and the things that happen in the third space, a, le a regular or an old-timer, or whatever you want to call them, will bring me in gently and show me the ropes and that kind of thing. Um, the, it's not as stressful in, in place. It's supposed to be, play takes place in the third space. There's not supposed to be a lot of, of there's not jobs to do, there's not tasks to do, and, the ta the, and if there are tasks and jobs to do there, they're only in the, to maintain the space in a very, and keep it in its wholesome, very accommodating, very open, very neutral, sort of welcoming place. Um, you can see uh, in a third space, you can see that it's not, it's not a bad place. It's a good place. It's uh, wholesome. It's, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, it's got a, a sort of a feels like a home away from home. And, and, and it's a place where you feel comfortable being who you are. So you can see that when we get to that point, when we lead through that progression of qualities, that there is a link between the first two, between these three theories of third space and the internet, and what we generally conceptualize as third space as the internet or cyberspace or whatever you want to call it. Um, those, those qualities seem to be taken up in a lot of places on the internet. Um, my, for example, I'm in my office slash study slash storeroom uh, I had to move things off the shelf or you'd get the wrong impression of what my life is like uh, here. But anyway, I'm at home now. And I, uh, this space isn't necessarily a first space because work comes into it. It's not a third space all the time. It's not a first space. Sometimes it's a second space. Sometimes work comes in here. I have to do things for work. I have to do whatever grading or writing or etc. Um, whatever my job requires. 
but sometimes I do some other things that aren't like that. Um, you can see on the internet, for instance, a course page isn't necessarily an online course page. It's not, according to the three theories that we, or I just talked about, um, that we are, we're examining together, isn't a third space because it's school. There are there are things, there is, a, there is a social strata, there are things you have to do. They are the rules of the school that you have to, however set up, have to, fo have to follow. There are uh, the things that are tied to the larger culture around you as opposed to your home culture, your first space culture, and you have to figure out how to interact in there. The professor of, a, of an online course can try and make it more like a third space, can make it more welcoming. So first, second, and third space um, are very fluid again, like our identity. And you can see that the way we are together manifesting our identities or articulating our identities, to use Baba's term, in, uh, or articulating ourselves, determines whether it's a first, second, or third space. Obviously, some people have more social capital and are able to control what others do within these spaces. For instance, a teacher or a professor can try and make and set up their classroom to be a third space, you know, with bringing in more of what the students have at home, more of what their, what their identity outside of school is into the classroom. Um, but it's the professor doing it. Sometimes students can wrest that control away from this professor. Um, there was an example, a study I did where, example, where, they, where they did that. Um, but largely, you know, your social capital allows you to d determine um, what others will do in spaces. Um, so when we think about it, for instance, um, Facebook now. Okay, let's look at Facebook through these three larger those three theories. Okay. From Baba's conception of a cultural cultural third space as a post-colonial theory, Facebook, and I'm sure you've seen it, is a place where you do try to carve out a hybrid identity where you bring in, you can see sometimes people bringing in their their their, their home knowledge. Um, lots of times to create this space where they can, where they can be a hybrid of the home and the larger culture, the what would be a colonial culture, the larger culture around them, um, the more the one that controls the large structures of our lives. Um, those that that hybrid identity exists in Facebook. Then we look at um, the third place theory of Soja, or third space slash third place theory, where we have that trialectic of history, social, historical, social, and spatial. Well, let's start with spatial. Third, my, Facebook is a space. There's the limits to Facebook. If you do things outside of Facebook, it's not Facebook anymore. If I go to, it's MySpace or chat room or somewhere else. If I go off, it's email. It's uh, some static website I've, I'm visiting. The Washington Post website, for instance, or New York Times website. That's not Facebook. So there is a spatial limitation. There is a history to this space. Um, I'm sure most of you are aware that Facebook started at Harvard as a kind of a sort of a yearbook slash directory where people could look up um, fellow students and um, you know find out about them their likes and their dislikes and the things that they did and, and they're gonna do and and then you know that would be an easier way to integrate into the larger culture of Harvard well you also know that in the olden days of Facebook oh so many years ago you had to have a college inner uh, email address you had to have an EDU in order to join well, it's blown up now. Facebook is just big. It's huge now. You know, anybody can, can get a Facebook account. In fact, um, about half of my Facebook friends are cats or dogs. Uh, so I guess they can get um, get onto Facebook, too, and have their own pages and things like that. Um, and sometimes they're the most interesting people I interact with. People. Uh, anyway, so, so that history of Facebook 
determine some of the things the way that Facebook happens now. That's why we have things like what's your religion, what's your relationship status, what's your, uh, what are your interests, what are those kinds of details because that's the historical aspect of Facebook that's come along with us. Some of the security aspects of Facebook come from the historical, um, that history of Facebook, the olden days Facebook. Then we have the social aspects of Facebook and Facebook tries very much to, to bring in um, the way that we interact. It tries to draw, a, get a line between the way we interact with each other in face-to-face, real-life kind of thing and sort of suck that into Facebook and make that um, interesting. I mean, Facebook didn't always have a chat feature. Facebook, um, you know, d didn't always allow you to do the things that you can do. Um, and within the physical restrictions of Facebook, the things that the software lets us do, for instance, and the structure that it is, the way it looks on the web and the way that the, the interface is, um, within that structure it tries to get us to do things like we would do face to face. And so that brings up, you know, issues that are going to be explored in the other parts of this MOOC. Um, and you could think about, you know, take this you know, Facebook is a good example because everybody knows about it, but think about, you know, some of the more interactive, perhaps political websites you might visit. Perhaps you go to Daily Coast, maybe you go to Red State, who knows. Um, but there, but those things are kind of a way of carving out a third space on the internet. Um, and none of these things are, at not, first, second, and third space, I'm sure you've figured out by now, there's nothing that's re exact. I mean, it's like, bing, here's the end of that, here's the border of that, here's the border of this. It's very different and we, you know, we move towards along a continuum of first, second, and third space qualities more or less. We'll never have a perfect third space, for instance.